If we are constantly seeking a sign, we might miss something that's right in front of us. God wants us to seek His heart first. Come on, we need to talk about this. As a young woman, I remember really wanting to do God's will, like surrendering my life, but I wanted to know what He wanted me to do. Yeah. And it's really hard. I think when yeah. you're younger, you're like, God, I want to do it, but what if my husband's there? Or what if my calling is here? And so I, at that point in my life, was cleaning houses. So I was a house cleaner for six years and owned my own company with my sister. And I would go and travel and speak on the weekends. So I would pay for my fuel. I would go and travel. And we would speak at these little youth groups of eight, 10 people. If revival hit, there were 12 people. <laughs> and so that's what I did. And again, I didn't know anything better. So I was like, I'm going to do it anywhere. That's kind of how my life was. So, you know, my sister and I have an identical twin sister. And we're these California twins. And we're going up and down the California coast and cleaning these big, huge homes. And then coming back and ministering and so at some point, about 19, and this is a couple years in, I was invited to be a pastor at a church, a small little church in Northern California, not to be the senior, but to come up and be a, one of the pastors. And so I was so excited. Like, this was my big moment. I was going to have my big break. I had been suffering for the Lord for two years, and now I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm going to get two years, and this is it. This is going to be it. And um, But I was really anxious because my parents and my family had just planted a church. And so I was a part of the church plant and we're seeing God beginning to grow this church. And we're one of the top 500 churches in America that were in this growth pattern. And we are having the, all these services and I'm getting to do what I feel called to do, but I've got this invitation to go happen somewhere else. Yeah. And so I am distraught because I don't know, I don't know what God is saying. I'm young and I don't know what he's saying to me. And so I remember I just felt like I didn't know what to do. So I paused in it and I wouldn't commit to go there and I wasn't commit to be home. And I was just feeling it out. This is back in the day before we had the swipe life and you could pick something else. This was kind of like the phone life. But anyway, so I'm sitting there and I'm distraught. I remember this prophetic woman coming in and I was like, if I could just get to the prophet, she'll tell me what to do because, you know, this is gonna solve it all. Let me just get to the prophet. So she comes up and I wait around the entire service and at the end and, I said, listen, and I explained everything to her in the most eloquent way possible. It's this and this, and I've got this option and not, you know, all these things. And I said, what do you think I should do? Would you feel like God may have told you something? And she says, well, I don't know. What do you want to do? <laughs> and I go, no, no, you're, you missed it. What I'm saying is, is that I have these two options and God is in one of them. And I need to just, I need to figure out where he is. And she goes, well, you're just standing at the threshold. You're not sure what to do. And God can't bless anything unless you move. Mm, come on. And I go, uh, okay. So I'm now at this moment of, well, do I want to go there or do I want to stay? Well, I start to have this feeling that I'm not supposed to go. And I don't know why, because it doesn't make sense. I'm supposed to go and this is the next step to ministry and I'm supposed to do it. And I hear the Lord say, and I just sense it. I'm not supposed to go. I just know it. So I finally tell them, you know, I can't. I'm so sorry. Thank you for the opportunity, but I'm going to stay here. Well, meanwhile, this church that invited me to come goes from 800 people to a massive worldwide ministry of thousands of people. The church is 12,000 people at this, wow. at this point. And their music goes all over the world. And I'm in this small church that is staying what it is, a small little church. And it was kind of the, I could have been, you know, and all those yeah. things kind of happened. And I remember really fighting. Did I miss you, God? Because, you know, it's like the guy you didn't date and then he gets married and, goes, and you're like, should I marry? I mean, I, I could have I rallied, but I didn't rally for this man. And so you kind of have this thing of like, I could have, but I didn't and missed opportunities. And I really battled with the Lord about it. And I didn't understand it until I started to understand that God had spoken to me. Yeah. And I thought, well, I never got the sign. I never got the wonder. I never got the dream. So how do I know? And it wasn't until I began to understand how God speaks to yeah. us yeah. did I understand how clear it was. So the way that I relate it, and not to belabor the idea, but there's the knowers, those that just know what God is saying. There's the hearers, those that hear God, kind of a play-by-play. There's the seers, the visionaries, people that get a picture and they move towards that. And then there's the feelers, those that sense a tangible grace and, and an emotion from heaven and they lean in. Well, I'm a knower. So I knew I wasn't supposed to go, but I didn't know it was God's voice because I didn't have that clarity yeah, to know how he was speaking. Good. Well, fast forward, 2008 happens and the recession kicks in. And if you're in California, it's devastating. Um, half my friends lost their homes, bankruptcy, and we lost our job. The church we had planted 
we lose our job and we have four kids now and I'm devastated. And if you've ever been in this place, I think our world kind of knows this part where you think, you know, one thing bad can happen, but to have all in the same row. And I remember getting the phone call and going into my bedroom and just crying and saying, God, I have never said no to you. Like I've done everything you asked me to do. And now I'm at the age, I'm in my 30s. I have four kids. Clearly I can't give one back. (laughs) So like, what am I gonna do? And I heard the Lord, I said, you know, what do you want me to do? You, You asked me to stay, you asked me to be here. And now you're actually like, leaving me. You're abandoning me. And I wasn't angry. I was just distraught. Like, I don't know what to do. And I heard the Lord. I said, what do you want me to do? And I remember him saying, I want you to make chicken. And I went, and I remember in the sarcasm of the California girl in me said, you make chicken. And he goes, I did. And I go, no, no, I mean, no. And he goes, I want you to make chicken. And I go, you mean like a meal? Like a meal? And he goes, yeah, you make really good chicken. I really think you should make a chicken meal. And I go, fine. So I remember getting up and I had all four kids around. I'm healing from my fourth C-section. I'm trying to nurse the baby. Ben's at work and I get the chicken together and I light the candles and I put on my Frank Sinatra and I'm ready for him to come home. And Ben walks in the door and he looks at me and he knows my wife is, this is not a good day for her. And um, he said, do you want to talk about it? I said, no, I just want to eat our chicken dinner and sit and have a meal, and then we can talk about it later. So we sat down and we did. We fed all the, the boys and my husband and we had the chicken and the end of the night, we put our kids to bed and we sat on the couch and we started talking about our future. And I'll tell you what, the moment I got up to make chicken, it was like everything went peaceful, even though nothing had changed. Wow. And this is how you know, right? The supernatural grace of God. But what I didn't know was that God had already set up a place for us to go. And in little less than one month, God sent me to the same church that had asked me at the age of 19 to go and be a director at their movement and now the women's pastor in that environment. And I get to go all over the world, having not been in the growth part of it, but get the abundance of that and still be where God called me. So I think there are a lot of us, and I know myself and different ones that are even probably watching today that are in the delay of the promise and they feel like they missed it. They should have married that person. They should have Mm. taken that job. They should have given that. They should have rallied and they can sometimes feel like the dream is getting further away. And I have learned and I'm learning that even in the midst of COVID and all the things we're experiencing, we can feel like we're missing something. And yet I believe that God's bringing back the dreams in the supernatural way. And we really need to lean into that. So my question is, how does God speak to you? Are you a knower, a seer, a feeler, or a visionary? And have you ever had a dream that got delayed and now you're realizing it was the grace of God? It was actually supernatural. I think it's an interesting fact that we are seeking for the sign yeah. Yeah. rather than the one who is giving Come on. the signs. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're always looking for that, yeah. like the same thing. I'd always be like, pick me. I know. <laughs> pick me. First of all, pick me. Or is it in this? It was in the me- And is it in that? Yeah. And then God's like, actually, no. I need you to know me yeah. because then I need you to learn how to hear my voice. Yeah, that's right. And when it doesn't make sense, so like coming to America, go with nothing to nothing but carrying the presence of God. Yeah. Well, that's great for you. <laughs> but everyone thinks we're nuts. Yeah. Everyone thinks, you know, my husband that was at the pinnacle of his ministry of leading a worship movement in yeah. Australia and I helped build this church from the ground up with my pastors and we're like leaving. I'm about to turn 40 and I'm like, this is not a good time. (laughs) But, you know, it was a knowing. And I think that knowing, going, I can't explain it, but I have to trust God. But I think He loves to respond to faith. Yes. He's God. And you know what I've learned? He will keep giving us green lights until we're ready to jump off a cliff. And he'll put a big flaming red light in front of us. But I was always wanting the three green lights. He's like, I've given you a green light. Keep walking until I put a really big flashy red light in front of you and you'll know. And so it's been a knowing for me. And all through our life, I think he will bring us back to this place because we can't get familiar with it. Well, I've worked this out. Yes. Because at 40, it was a wrestle. And then now I'm 48 and I know he's doing the same thing again. Okay, where are you headed? Are you going to stay comfortable? Is there something you have to lean in? I mean, I feel like there's been an agitation in my spirit where I have to give margin to the secret place again like I've gone deeper before. 
So he's like, okay, this was a year season of harvest. Now I need you back in the secret place again, That's sowing really seeds. Yeah. It's a constant and you have to be in tune to know when to stop, to know, Ooh. to hear, to see. And I think it's the beauty again of the wonder of God, but it's not seeking the gift or the thing. Mm -hmm. It's seeking him. You know, what just so came to, to mind for me is, um, that question, you know, gosh, did I make a mistake? Did I make mm -hmm. the wrong decision? Should I have done this? Should I have done yeah. that? And I literally just heard the Lord remind me, and I want to remind everyone watching, that the steps of a righteous yeah. man are yes, ordered. They are. ordered. And what that means is, even if you misstep, Mm -hmm. He will direct your yeah. steps yeah. because they're still ordered. They're ordered. Yeah. And so you don't have to drown in the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and then you find yourself paralyzed, right? Yeah. Because you're like, oh gosh, you know, I thought that was the one That's and now right. he likes me, but I don't know because I think <laughs> I should have been like and, and God is like, I yeah. will order your steps. Just yes. take a step. Step. Yeah. And even if you take the wrong step, all things work yeah. together That's for right. good That's right. yeah. to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And I, I know that there have been several things that I've done in my life where I'm just like, oh, I don't think that was. <laughs> but I look back on it and I'm like, actually, exactly. that was a redirection. Yeah. Yeah. Like God used literally it. used yeah. it to get me where right. I am today. Yeah. And I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. Like yeah. the mistakes, the, yep. the, the hurts, the habits, the hangups, like all of it. I wouldn't change a thing because God has, he has built something beautiful out of it. For me, my story is so similar to Alex's that we were pastors in Northern Ireland for almost 20 years and loved our church. We planted it in our living room and there were only six of us and they were all related to me. So they had to be there. They had no choice. God bless them. And then the Lord grew that and grew it. But it, I mean, it was extraordinary what the Lord did. It, it was extraordinary. And then he just started to speak to us. But here's the thing. He spoke to us about moving to Orange County, where we live now. But no job, mm -hmm. nothing to move to. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. everything to lay on the altar. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and we knew that we knew that we knew. Yeah. And, and it did look crazy because we had two teenage kids yeah. and no salary. <laughs> and I, I, for yeah. those of you who do not live in Orange County, you really need a salary. Yes, you yeah. do. Maybe two or three, actually. <laughs> Multiply that right. for you so that you can go to Trader Joe's. So it's an expensive, it's an expensive place to live. It is. But um, the Lord, he's just so kind. And what I wanted to say was there was a long, long delay, though, because we loved what we were doing in Northern Ireland. But back in, I think it was 2007, I started having dreams about here to the point where I thought, I am losing what few marbles I actually have. <laughs> Is this yeah. the Lord? Like it was almost yeah. distracting at times. Yeah. I knew the Lord was calling yeah. us here, but because he wasn't open in it, there was this beautiful opportunity for me to deeply love the people I was right in front of. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, really love them. And they were Very easy good. to love. My goodness, they're incredible people and they continue to be. There was a surrender that came in the waiting. Yeah. yeah. Knowing yeah. that. And every time I put that thing back, yep. not on the altar, back on a shelf so that I didn't have to feel so bad just yeah. quiet in there mm. and the Lord would just give me another dream mm. and you know what's interesting is I love the way he does it he's so sneaky <laughs> but um I had about seven maybe I can not quite remember maybe it wasn't maybe five five to seven dreams about taking on the church that we now lead wow. like 12 13 14 years before we actually wow. came the Lord is saying, this is your inheritance. So yeah. these are inheritance streams. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, this is amazing, Lord. Thank you so much. Please give us back what the Lord did back in those days was like mind boggling. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, please, Lord, I would love that. But after we moved here, it was six months before we realized part of why the Lord had brought us here. So we were just watching the Lord provide for us and find in different ways just to give away Jesus to anybody we met. Yeah. Everywhere we're like, it's all right, we'll just plant our lives here. Um, and then the church that we lead now, Vineyard Anaheim, approached us and asked us, would we consider um, taking or at least looking at taking on the church? And that was when I went, I went back and read my journal and I'm like, oh my wow. giddy aunt. The Lord yep. spoke to me so clearly about wow. this. And if I read this through a literal lens, I can see the Lord spoke 12, 13, 14 yeah. years ago. Yeah. So true. Now that makes me think about my journey into ministry because I was in business at the time. 
and and I'm still in business. But then the Lord told me to walk <laughs> away from it. And I was in real estate and he was just like, walk away from everything, you know. And I was just like, what do you mean? Like, I love this. Mm. So I think it was a mixture of knowing, hearing, seeing. Because mm-hmm. I dream a lot yes. as well. And so in that moment, he was telling me, he, like, because I, I entered a place where I just didn't feel at peace with myself. Yeah. I felt like, God, who you created me to be, I'm not being, I'm mm-hmm. not that person mm-hmm. right now. So I went on a journey of, I was in prayer, I was in fasting. And I'm like, God, something is off. And the response from that was, walk away from everything yeah. and move. And I almost wow. felt like, is the mistake asking you, what should yeah, I yeah. do? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, so I moved to downtown LA and I'm like, I don't understand what I'm doing. And I come from a Nigerian background and they're very big on, what are you doing with your life? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Are you working? Are you, <laughs> you know, so it's very big on being stable, established. I remember when I told my mom, I don't, I, I'm not sure what I'm doing right now. And she was like, I need to pray for my daughter. I think she's losing her mind. <laughs> and so in downtown LA, eventually the Lord led me to the church. So the church that I'm the executive pastor now. And so when he led me there, so I remember walking in and he said, this is where I would raise you. Mm. And I was like, what does that mean? What does that look like? Um, and then in a dream, he tells me to serve as an usher. And the first year, that's all I should do, serve as an usher. Mm. And I'm like, you want me to do what? <laughs> this is what I left. <laughs> and my mom, we didn't talk for like three months. Yes. My brothers were just like, are you losing it? Because my mom was like, Stephanie, if you want to serve in the house of God, come to Nigeria. Yes. You know, you, yeah. people need God, you know, right. so, and you could work. <laughs> if there's no work for you to do out there, you could work here and serve God all you want. <laughs> and I was like, no, but this is the instruction that the Lord has given me. And so during that course, and I'm in a place I didn't know anyone there. And so during that whole course of one year, what God was really doing was prepare a shepherd's heart. Yeah. And so it was serving with people. It was loving on people, yep. taking on the yeah. burdens of people. Because as an usher, you're walking up, you're meeting people, yeah. you're yeah. greeting yeah. them, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're hearing what's going on. So I didn't realize that that was what was being cultivated. But that was very hard for me. I was living off my savings. I had very hard moments. I had yes. moments where I questioned God a lot. And just like you're saying, I, there are moments where I'm like, I'm, I'm not doing this. I'm yeah. not. And then I will have a dream. <laughs> yeah. And the Lord yeah. will come to me and he mm-hmm. says, if you stay, yeah. what I said will be perfected. Wow. And so it was not easy, but there were those yeah. handprints of God all around it. Because even when I would have a hard moment, it was a hard moment in his hands. Yeah. yeah. You know, and yeah. so I do believe that even when we get into that place of not knowing, oh God, did I make a mistake? The biggest thing you can do is to live surrendered. Because yeah. when you live surrendered to Christ, mm-hmm. he knows how to yes. redirect you if needed. Not you redirecting yeah. yourself. If needed, he would redirect you. Yeah. And I started learning that even sometimes what we call mistakes is really just labor pains. Yeah. That God, you're birthing me through Good. all of this that I feel like, did I get this wrong? That, you know, disappointment, yeah. all of it is labor pains. Yeah. And so when that year was wrapped up and going into, you know, just wondering, so he told me to write a book. I wrote the book. My pastor read the book. It was a whole story. And then I became, but what's interesting, before I became a pastor, the Lord told me when I would preach. And that's when I gave my message. Um, I remember in a dream, I was being anointed to be um, the campus pastor. And then it was revealed. Then a year later, I was being anointed again to be the executive pastor before it happened. And so I saw how God was literally telling me, I have been with you all along. And so what I learned from that was not about the place, but it was about the hand of God that knows how to direct you. And wherever he leads you to, whether you know, you don't know, whether you're confused, you're sure that he knows how to guide you, you know, and resting Mm -hmm. on that. Because I think so many times we are kind of judging the lack of fruit too soon. Yes. That's right. And so we're saying that, God, there's no fruit in this decision, but the time for fruit has not come. That's yes. right. And so we use that Very to say, good. oh my gosh, like I made a mistake. Mm-hmm. No, if I'm in God's hands, I'd rather make a mistake in His hands yes. Yes. rather than making it in my pride or yeah. in my ego. If yeah. I'm making it because I said I was going to do this to glorify the name of God, He is God enough to know how to use that yeah. to still deliver on His word. Yeah. So. You just made me um, <laughs> reflect on something. Um, so the question of do you you know see, feel, hear? I hear mm-hmm. the voice of God. And it's interesting because so the role I'm in now, I lead faith partnerships at Facebook. Everybody thinks Facebook is a godless place. <laughs> but nope. 
I'm there and the Lord is with me. So, um, but before Facebook, I never worked in social technology at all. I loved what I was doing. I was helping lead a, a network of alternative schools for girls. And I was in prayer. April of 2017, I was in prayer and I was asking God for clarity on what I need to do next in that role. And the Lord said, this assignment is over. Like I, I heard it so clearly. Yeah. And the CEO had came to me like a couple of weeks before and was like, we're doing my succession plan. I want to put you down as my successor. Just want to make you aware of that. I was like, all right. <laughs> and for me, I felt like that was my assignment yes. because, you know, my background, where I came from, I saw yeah. myself in these girls and I thought I would do that for the rest of my life. But I know I heard the voice of God and I know the voice of God. And so I told my husband and I said, babe, God just told me to resign from, from my job. And he was like, are the bills resigning too? Because <laughs> uh, you can't just walk off your job. But uh, I knew what God said. So um, I prayed again. I said, Lord, you know, what do you want me to do next? And he told me to resign at the end of the fiscal year, yeah. June 30th, 2017. Friday, June 30th, 2017. Wow. Gave me that day. So I sit down with my boss and I give her my letter of resignation. And she's like, well, what are you going to do next? Oh. And I'm like, I'm going to tell you soon. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, Lord, what am I going to do next? Right? <laughs> and so we finished talking at 140. I get in my car and I'm driving home. And like the weight of it is now settling on yeah, me. Because yeah. I'm like, I just quit my job. And so I'm like, Jesus, what are we doing? Yeah. 2.05, 25 minutes later, my cell phone rings and it's a 650 area code. It just said San Francisco, California. I didn't know anybody. I wasn't going to answer it. Thought I was a telemarketer. And the spirit said, take that call. Yeah. And so I was like, all right. So I picked it up and uh, this woman was like, hi, is this Nona Jones? And I said, yes. And she said, hi, I'm calling from Facebook. And I said, well, Facebook doesn't call people. So who right. is this <laughs> playing games on my phone? And uh, she proceeded to tell me that the week before, Mark changed the mission of the whole company to focus on community building. And she said that the largest community in the world that was the most meaningful to the people who were in it was the faith community. Wow. And that my name had been mentioned in a meeting wow. as someone that they should talk to about the work. And I was just like, all right, Lord. So you knew wow. Wow. months yeah. ago wow. that if I walked in faith, because see, here's the thing. Here's the key. When you talk about identity and assignment, my identity was so wrapped up in what I was doing that if they would have called me and I had not resigned, right. yeah. I wouldn't have left. Right. Wow. That's right. I wouldn't have that's left amazing. because I loved what I was doing yes. and I felt like that's what I was wow. called to do. And so God was like, I'm calling you away to a land that you know nothing of. You've never even yeah. seen yeah. it. Wow. You've never stepped foot in it. You're going to question why you're there, oh, but Lord. I've called you to it. This and so I'm just, I'm so grateful. As I listen to your stories, it's encouraging yes. me yeah. that a lot of times God will call you away from the very yes. thing that was your identity yes. Yes. so he can get you to walk in your assignment. Yes. Come and on. that's what we're doing. Yes. So true. Wow. Yeah. And sometimes I think, especially if we are strong women, we sometimes yes. feel like we want to make it happen and then we'll give it to God. Like, right. look what I did for you. Yeah, rather than, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I might be an adult and I might have been an adult for a while, but I don't know what's next. Yeah. And I just think of so many people right now in my own personal life that are in all seasons of life that have killed the Goliaths in their life, but now they're sitting there going, what's next? Yeah. And so I wanna pray for you if yeah. you're watching and let's pray today for those women and that are watching, men and women that are like, I just need to know. Yeah. So Holy Spirit, yes. I thank you that you knew they were supposed to watch this today. Yes. I thank you that they have tuned in to this very moment and there's something within them that's saying, yes, I need to believe for the next. I need to see the next. And I, I just want to remind them first that the Holy Spirit, you live within them and you are leading them and guiding them and comforting them. And I ask right now that we would, as women, surrender yeah. to the leading of your Holy Spirit. And I ask where there is no courage, you would help them to be courageous. Where there is fear, you would give them faith, God. Wherever they might feel depleted and bankrupt, whether it be financially, emotionally, mentally, even relationally, I ask Holy Spirit that they would see that they are not this moment, that there is so much more ahead of them. And I pray right now for a divine intervention, like yeah. right now, right where they are, that if their marriage is over, I pray that you would revive their marriage. If their finances are at the darkest place, I ask God that you would give them 
clarity on what to do to generate and to to see revenue like they haven't seen. And for those that are maybe have had lost loved ones in this season and and they're they're feeling discouraged and and sad and in grief, I pray you would revive them and let them know that you didn't bring them out of Egypt to to let them die in the desert, but you're they're, they're going to carry on and there is still a great promise. So revive our hearts today. Encourage us. Do what only you can do. God speak to the deepest of who we are and remind us of who we are in you. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. 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 I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community. 